There is a step when building a PC that has the potential of saving you a ton of heartache and pain in the process. It goes by many names. Wow, that sounds super mythical when I say it that way. Terms like bench testing or breadboarding. Your components may be a vernacular that is new to you, but fear not. We will walk you through what that means and how to do it right here on Robitech. So when you think about the regular process of building a PC, you think about almost every step-by-step -step guide on the internet. You get all the parts, you clear out your table, and piece by piece, you start to piece them all together. Like a, like a legendary set of Lego, brick by brick, your masterpiece forms until finally you push the button and nothing happens. Wait, could it be the CPU or the RAM? Maybe it's the GPU. What if it's the motherboard? I mean, I would have to take the whole build apart. The pain as you start to undo your cable management and remove your component piece by piece, trying to figure out where it all went wrong. Fortunately, there is something you can do before this that could potentially save you from this pain when you get to that final button push and be rewarded with the magical glow of RGP upon your skin as you bathe in it and your skin still stays white because you're locked in your mom's bed. Point is, instead of that pit in your stomach and a sleepless night trying to piece together what happened, you can do this instead. Now it has many names, again, with the very sounding mythical thing. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna call it bench testing your components. Well, after all that, that whole build up, and it's like, it's bench testing, no! Oh! And you know, honestly, it's a step that's skipped way too often in the PC building process. What bench testing is essentially is building your PC outside of your case and ensuring that it works before taking the time to put all of it inside of this new long-term home. Now, I'm going to add that if you are planning on doing a water cool PC, not an AIO, but a full custom loop, that this process becomes doubly important because finding a failure here can save you even more time if you know a card doesn't work before you put a GPU block on it. I mean, if you didn't test it before, did you break it when putting the block on or was it broken before? Ooh, the conundrum. So how do you test your components outside of a case? I mean, does that mean I have to buy a motherboard with a built-in power button on it? I mean, Roby, I just bought a scalp GPU and I only have a budget of $20 for my motherboard. Too soon? The short answer is no. You can do this with any number of components and you don't need a MOBA with a special button in order to do this before building your PC. So let's walk you through this, shall we? Now first, what are you gonna need to bench test your PC outside of a case. First, here's what you need. Motherboard and motherboard box, which we have right here. Now this actually serves a dual purpose. Number one, there's a nice non-conductive place to build your PC and it's got this elevation so you can put your GPU on it. So that's important because you need it to be able to overhang. So it's got two purposes, aren't we lucky? Two, you need a screwdriver both a Phillips head and in this case, a flat head. Now, if you don't wanna do what I do and have a million options like buy an iFixit or whatever it was, you will at least need a standard screwdriver like so and a flat head screwdriver like so as well. Three, you're gonna need a CPU cooler. Now, you can go as far and test your AIO cooler if you want to, I won't stop you, but they do have a tendency to be the lowest point of failure, so unless you really want to, you're gonna need to use an air cooler. You might need to pick up an inexpensive air cooler for this part. I recommend the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. It's about 40 bucks and it works with both Intel and AMD and has more than enough cooling capacity to do what you need to do here. Now, if you have an air cooler already, then you can just use that, it's up to you. You may also be lucky if you got a 5600X or like what we're gonna use in this case, a Ryzen 3000 series that also comes with a cooler. That's an option as well. You're gonna need isopropyl alcohol and thermal paste. Why, you might ask. Well, here's the deal, guys. More than likely, you're gonna be using the cooler you may not be using inside your building, unless you're doing an AIO. 
The reason you need the thermal paste is because you're gonna have to basically put thermal paste on to put your cooler on, potentially, and you're gonna need the isopropyl alcohol because we may be taking parts of this apart and you're gonna need to clean your CPU. If you're using your own cooler and you're using the one you're gonna, or you're gonna use your AIO and it's what you're gonna do, these are things you won't necessarily need. You're gonna need your PSU. Duh. Now in order to test your whole PC and ensure that it works, you need to be able to turn it on and that means power. So you'll need to make sure you have your PSU. Now, if you're gonna use cable extensions, have them out, use them anyway. Again, might as well test it if you're gonna be putting it into the case. You're gonna need your CPU, you're gonna need your GPU, you're gonna need your M.2, because all of these things come at a higher risk of coming in as DOA or dead on arrival. So it's worth putting all of these things together to ensure your PC works and that all the components are functioning. You're also gonna need a mouse and keyboard so you can look through your BIOS, etc. And then you're gonna need a clean, big area surface like this one with a power outlet that's not too far away so you can plug all your stuff in. Also, finally, this is, a, this is kind of a small thing, but you're gonna need a knife to open the boxes. I recommend not ripping them open because you're like, oh my gosh, I just got a 3090. <laughs> and then you find out your 3090 doesn't work and it's broken and now your original packaging is in shreds versus if you just open it with a knife and it's still in good shape. So if you do need to return something, I'd open it with a knife versus just getting excited and throwing caution to the wind. So now that you have all your parts and you're ready to go, what do you do next? Well, let's go ahead and walk through building this PC and getting it bench tested. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our motherboard, we're gonna stick it on top of the motherboard box. Congratulations, we're on our way. Okay, next thing, let's go ahead and put our CPU in. Pop this off, get it to 90 degrees. And again, just drop it in, like so. If you have Intel, it might be a little bit different. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and grab our cooler. Important part, just verify that you have thermal paste or don't. Because I don't, I need to put thermal paste on. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is just install our M.2. Now, you may have, if you wanna test all of these, you can do that. Just install as many as you want. Okay, lastly, let's get our RAM in. So you're just gonna install your GPU again. Okay, just gonna take that and then kind of push your board over and then overhang. So this thing overhangs and then just clicks in. There you go. So now you've got entirely built motherboard ready to be tested. You can see it's basically good to go. I can still plug things in. Next thing I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna grab my PSU, which is all ready and here to go. Apparently this is an ROG Strix one. <laughs> grab this 1200 watt behemoth. <laughs> I didn't know it was in here, but it's fine. Just grab the cables that you need to test your stuff. This is for our GPU, this is for our motherboard, and then we need our CPU, which is right here. There we go. Again, that's everything I need to be able to test this. Now again, if you have cable extensions, plug those on here before you plug them in if you want. We've got a fully built system, basically ready to bench. For the CPU cooler that I'm using here, I'm just using the one that came with my 3600X for the sake of demonstration. If you do wanna see how to install or put together the Cooler Master Hyper 212, you can actually check out this video right here for Ryzen. The Intel is actually pretty similar and you can just look at the differences in the instructions if you need help. Okay, so we now have the whole thing built. I got it all plugged in. Now what? If you don't have one of those bigger budget motherboards like what I'm using here, then you could just hit that power button right here if you had it, but I don't and you don't either. So what I'm gonna show you is the more universal method that will work in either case, and that's jump into connection using the front panel connectors on the motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my power. So the board is now getting power. Down here is your front panel connection. So it may be different on your motherboard. You're gonna to wanna to go look, but you're gonna look for the two pins that are the power switch and it's in the front panel. So again, look at your manual, find this on your motherboard. It's usually labeled front panel in the manual and you wanna find the power switch pins. Now, using your flathead screwdriver, you're gonna jump the power on the motherboard just like this. Voila, you have power and now our PC is now booting and hopefully here in a minute, we'll see a post and all that stuff. Now, I'm not gonna do some in-depth troubleshooting here. That's not the point of this video, but you could have some issues just turning it on and given it's kind of tricky, so I'm gonna give you some stuff to try, just given that this part of it is unique. If you don't have power right now, try jumping it again. 
and double check that you are actually hitting the right pins. If that doesn't work, check that all the power connectors are plugged in and secure, especially this 24 pin and this eight pin EPS. If that doesn't work and all of your power stuff and you're sure everything's plugged in, what you can do is you unplug this 24 pin. If you have one of these and you can buy one, they're pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link down in the description below to pick one up. You're just gonna pop this on over your 24 pin like this and turn this on. If the fan turns on like this, then it's not your PSU. And more than likely you've, you've hit your first issue, unfortunately, and now you see why we do this. And there's probably something potentially wrong with your motherboard, et cetera. So now that you're in the BIOS, you can do things like verify that your CPU fan works, that you can see your RAM, that your M.2 is installed, all of that other stuff. And you, you have all those options, but again, you're seeing here what you can basically do. You could update your BIOS now, ensure that everything is good, and even install Windows if you wanted to, and ensure that there are no problems that are apparent with any of your hardware. So if you're using a cooling solution that isn't optimal for your CPU, like you threw some tiny cooler on there and you're using like a 5950X with like some little, little tiny thing, I wouldn't recommend stressing the system to see if there's a problem. But if you do have your actual real cooler and you wanna just make sure it's all good to go and put it before you put it into the case, you can totally do that as well. This is the easiest time to swap out parts and ensure that all of your stuff is up to snuff before you give it more of a permanent home. Now that you have checked all of your components and we're good to go, what's next? Well, let me just walk you through taking some of the key things apart and preparing to put it in your system. The good thing is most of your stuff is working and your MOBO is probably 95% together. And you may be able to do some of this and just take your thing, un uh, like take these few things apart and go ahead and put it inside of your case and start moving forward with your build. But for the sake of this video though, let's assume you're going to be using a new cooler and let's go from there. Wait for all of the power stuff to kind of shut off. What you're doing is you're waiting for power draw to happen. There's still some power. We've got a 1200 watt behemoth here. While we're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my mouse and my keyboard, get that stuff put away. Now we can do things like unplug all of our connections. So one of the things I wanna talk about here is taking your GPU off because a lot of people think you can just basically pull this off. That's not true. Down here in the bottom is a little clip what you wanna do is you wanna push down and that's gonna release your GPU. And you can easily then at that point in time, take this out. So now your GPU's out and you're good to go there. We're gonna keep everything else in here, M.2, all that sort of stuff, but we do wanna go ahead and remove our CPU cooler. When you're removing your cooler, thermal paste can be pretty tight on this, so rotating left and right versus just lifting it up. A lot of times, if you're getting a lot of resistance, people will just lift it up and you can literally rip the CPU out of the socket. So twisting it will help break up that connectivity so you can take it off. And then you're just gonna take it off and move it off to the side. If you're using Ryzen, you may need to put these brackets back on, especially if you're using an AIO. So we're just gonna put these back on real quick and then we'll clean our CPU. If you grab your isopropyl alcohol, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, Roby, I got this whole thing clean. I'm gonna go ahead and put more thermal paste on. Don't, because again, depending on the cooler, your thermal paste actually might be pre-applied on your AIO or even on your other air cooler if you're gonna switch out air coolers in this case. Go verify that your, your cooler doesn't have it pre-applied because if it does, Doing double thermal paste, not a good idea. More is not better in this case. You want just that nice thin layer. And that's it. You have now test benched all of your hardware and you're ready to build. A couple of notes though. One, if you are going to do a custom water loop, I recommend building a soft tube loop outside of your case and just testing that it all works. If you want a video on this, let me know down in the comments below. But after you're installing a block, especially on a GPU, it can be kind of fickle. So ensuring that all your stuff works with the blocks on your CPU and GPU before you build your loop is going to save you a lot of time and heartache, especially if something goes wrong. That can be absolutely brutal. I've done it, it sucks. Two, there is a point in the build when you're going to get everything hooked up. I know on a lot of my videos that you see me do cable management as I go, but as a first timer or as someone who doesn't have a wall of parts or hundreds of systems under their belt, I recommend getting it all plugged in, turning on the system before you cable management. 
Now, one thing, if you're looking to install windows and all that stuff as part of this process, there's a great video that you can watch right here that tells you about all that stuff. How do you install your drivers? How to basically do some light bench testing, all that stuff. If you're wanting to do that while your system is sitting on your makeshift bench. Now, I'd love to know down in the comments below what you thought of this. If you found this video helpful, if this is something you're gonna add to your PC build moving forward. So while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we either post a new video or go live right here on YouTube. Now, speaking of live, we do have a live show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time, either here on YouTube or over on Twitch. You can watch it, it's your choice. Now, if you wanna hang out and just ask a bunch of questions, we have an incredible, incredible community over at Discord at discord.gg slash Robitech. Uh, it has over 12,500 members that'll help you with PC builds. Uh, you get tech questions, you just wanna hang out and talk about tech, you wanna play games, all that sort of stuff. Hang out with us, come be a part of us. It's absolutely a lot of fun. Also, if you want just more of me or more of our community, go ahead and join it and follow us on all of the individual uh, 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 social media things. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get that right off my tongue. You can uh, see our pretty pictures over on Instagram or maybe check out all our memes over on Twitter or you can basically check out all the dances that we're doing over on TikTok. We're on all of those things and we're active on all of them and we'd love to have you be a part of it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy this video and I super look forward to seeing you on the next one.